Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be simply, hopefully right, <laughs> simply installing uh, just the uh, wideband for the air fuel ratio. Um, we do have gauges or uh, aftermarket boost gauges and then coolant temperature gauges, gauges and there is another uh, opening where I'm going to put the wideband. Um, you know, honestly, that's probably the most important thing that you should be watching, you should be checking. Um, so I'm gonna set that up. Um, the test pipes that are already on there do have a bung uh, for the Y band already, which is really nice. So it uh, should be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And I think the route that I'm gonna take is I'm going to come up through the uh, center console and underneath the shifter there's a kind of like a dust boot and uh, I should be able to wire things into the car through there and then I'm gonna run power again I'll get the light for you but I'm gonna run power to the cigarette lighter here the cigarette lighter does only get it only gets power <laughs> does only get power doesn't make sense anyway it only gets power uh, with turnkey so if the car's not on there's no power running to it so i'm pretty sure i'm going to use this as power and that way i can just simply run the wires up to that third slot right there um, in the uh, boost gauge console that i got going on so um, like i said should be easy um, but as we all know nothing is ever as easy as it's supposed to be so let me show you real quick what comes in the box so we have our boost gauge, obviously, our boost gauge, our uh, air fuel ratio gauge, obviously. Um, that actually comes with a change of interfaces, directions, which we all know nobody reads, and instead of making our lives easier, we just try to figure it out. So um, we have the power cable. Here is the other interface, which I really like, but uh, car's all black, so it's just not happening. Um, here is our O2 sensor with the plug that should plug yep plug directly into there uh, which and then on the other end plugs also into the air fuel ratio uh, we got some looks like we got a, a bung here if needed if you had to weld one which is really nice and uh, some wire taps and such and oh, a rubber band sometimes that's uh this one actually it's really nice so it comes with uh, this little bracket on the back here and these screws, um, you know, keep it nice and tight in its place. And then this, I guarantee, is a sticker. Yes, look at that. We got an AEM sticker that I'm not putting on the car. But <laughs> thank you very much, AEM. I will continue to support you. <laughs> so cool, easy enough. Let me uh, jack up the car, see what we got going underneath and uh, yeah, if everything looks good, the O2 sensor actually fits in the bung, then we'll start taking apart the center console, and uh, I'll take you guys for the ride. So stay tuned, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll take you through the, the process. All right, guys, so for, starting from inside the car, uh, so as far as taking apart the dash, we're going to first take out these two screws up here, and there's these little black clips, if you have them uh, still, but that cover it. Um, I literally just uh, took my little plastic tools, I get like 10 bucks on Amazon, and uh, and literally just kind of popped them out, um, and it just kind of shot out. So I'm going to take apart those screws and move on to the next. Next, there's two screws under this little tab right here. If I can get something under there. There we go. See if I can pop that out. All right, and then next, like I said, you got these two screws right here. One there, one there. So let's remove those. Okay, so once you do that, and uh, remove the aftermarket uh, faceplate from the head unit if you got one. Um, you just gotta kinda tug on everything, kinda all around. 
Um, if you do have these plastic pieces, you can always, uh, utensils, whatever you want to call them, you can always use them to help as well too. Um, but you can then pop everything out. Um, I'm going to go behind there and uh, I got to unplug the turbo timer and make sure that these wires um, to their boost controller and our coolant temperature uh, are like there's enough play, whatever it may be, so that I can remove it. Otherwise, I just need to unplug those as well, too. Um, but that is basically the next step and then we can get down to removing this center console here because like I said, I'm going to be coming up through, um, I'm going to be powering from the uh, lighter over here. So, Alright, so I was able to fit the faceplate in, um, which is really nice. So pretty straightforward, I think it's a 52 millimeter, which is normal for, for most. Um, I did not need the bracket, um, these things fit pretty snug. Uh, but what I did do was I still put those uh, screws on the back and actually this one on the left uh, in a way kind of um, is acting as like uh, it's holding it onto the plastic back there. So uh, yeah, let's uh, move on to getting this all set up and uh, next steps I gotta take apart the interior. Or, I'm sorry, the interior. We are taking apart the interior. We gotta take apart the... Uh... Alright, so we got that off to the side. Uh, tons of wires or a lot of room so I didn't actually have to unplug anything which is nice I could just shove it all back in but oh man talk about spaghetti I am going to 100% uh, I'm gonna end up replacing this head unit um, even though it is very cool with the CD player um, when I do that I'm going to diagnose all of that and uh, and make it look nice but right now I'm li really just trying to put this in real quick so we could bring it to uh, the tuner and we could just make sure everything's running nice so next taking off the center console area here um, if I'm not mistaken I believe there is a screw so there is a screw right there um, then there are two screws one right there and one right there and then the shift knob that should be it uh, let me get to it you don't need to watch me turn a screwdriver, um, but if there is anything else, I'll make sure I let you know. All right, so just want to let you know. So after taking off the the um, shifter, the two screws up front, and then the screw that was underneath the ashtray, um, to take this piece off right here, you actually have to kind of slide it forward and, and pull up. Um, um, so I did take the plug out for uh, like the tuning and sport mode here just because there was no like room for me to really even pull anything out um, And next what I'm gonna be doing is black um, Should be ground and this orange and black should be power. I'm going to double check of course um, Before I do that and actually honestly before I even did this uh, make sure you disconnect the the uh, negative for the uh, battery terminal um, no need to fry the system or yourself so uh, and then I am a little concerned um, this is really nice actually um, and I may be able to possibly peel that up a little bit I don't have looks like I don't have the stock uh, dust boot that is usually there um, but no big deal I can most certainly figure out something to make it work I'm pretty sure there's like the whole it's like right around right around here something along those lines so I will figure it out and make it work and uh, most certainly show you what what I do and it looks like there's some lines ran over here as well too so I can um, zip tie it along that to the side and then run it up um, so hopefully the camera just followed that I for completely forgot I was holding the camera so anyway let me figure out if which one's positive, which one's negative, uh, and then let me figure out how we're gonna run this wall, uh, this line, so. All right guys, so I have everything apart, just so you know, so I unplugged the, um, you know, the plug going into the cigarette lighter, and then with my multimeter here, um, you know, turned the car ignition on and checked to see which was the hot wire and which was, um, 
you know the ground obviously just want to double check because there is a black one which usually is the ground and of course in this case it is so but just want to double check so what I'm going to do now the car is off I'm gonna see again make sure that I'm not getting any power sorry if you can't really see uh, make sure that I'm not getting any power to the orange wire here and if not, I know that we're good to go, and that's the wire that we are going to be tapping into. So uh, let me just double check that, and uh, and yeah, go go from there. Okay, so since I do not have the stock shift boot and shift plate, um, it's going to be a little bit harder for me to run this, um, but I am still going to run it through there. There is a slight hole that I think I can... Um, well, I don't think I should be able to feed the smaller end, not the big uh, clip that clips into the uh, actual O2 sensor. I'll have to feed the the small, uh, you know, power uh, what plugs into the actual, um, you know, the gauge. Jeez, I'm struggling today. Uh, the side that actually uh, goes into the gauge, I'll have to feed that up through that area, which is going to be pretty difficult by myself, but. Pretty sure I can make it work. Um, but, like I said, so this is good to go. So I'm going to uh, tap my inline fuse into the orange there. Um, I am going to be doing it the old school way where I uh, kind of peel back the wire. I'm going to split it and then wrap the wires together uh, and then apply some electrical tape. Um, <laughs> I literally went to two different auto... Uh, I went to... AutoZone and um, Advanced Auto Parts and both only had really uh, the larger size of the uh, wire taps and to be perfectly honest with you I don't really like them um, there's a lot of chance for them to kind of shake loose and such so just gonna do it the old school way um, I have videos on actually how I do that uh, on uh, for like the WRX when I did that redid the headlights and stuff like that so you can always uh, just find those as well too um, but yeah gonna open up the wire separate it like split it open and then insert um, the new wire and and go from there so all right guys so a moment of truth so I have everything uh, tapped in here um, here is my inline fuse I'm pretty sure you get away with a five but I have a ten in there um, and everything is wired up accordingly so moment of truth this is the uh, air fuel ratio one here let's turn the car on and look at that sweet so we got power um, so next step is trying to run this wire for the uh, O2 sensor by myself so uh, one thing to always remember um, you want to turn this on before the O2, before putting in the O2 sensor. Just helps make sure it calibrates it properly. Um, and then, like I said, now we're gonna head underneath the car. And uh, I'm I'm very lucky. My test pipe already has a bung in it. But like I said, the difficult part is gonna be running it through that tiny shift boot with probably one of the smallest holes. Um, but we'll make it work. So if not. You can always run it through the rear fender well, um, and you then you can run it around through the entire console and up to the gauge. So that's a pain in the ass, uh, but if it needs to be done, it will be done. But regardless, like I said, I think we can get it through here. So um, moving on to the next. And hey guys, real quick, before I um, kind of bundle this all up, I wanted to let you know, so, <clears throat> um, what comes with the AEM gauge, um, you know, in their wiring, there is a white and blue wire. Therefore, um, honestly, if you're hooking up to other, like, different things, you're really using just the black and red wire here. Um, so I wrap these individually first and then wrap them together, and then I'm just going to uh, wrap them to the, to the line here and uh, just make it look pretty and clean. So, But just want to let you know. You're not going to need those um, unless you are tapping into other different devices. So, all right, guys. So let me show you how I at least found everything. Um, I still need to run it though. So, this right here is my magnetic 
uh, grabber. You know, you drop some screws and um, makes life easier to pick them up. So I put it, obviously I didn't put the magnet side in because it would have got caught on everything that's metal under there. Um, but I slid that through the tiny opening and I was able to find it under the, um, under the uh, car, obviously. And then from there, there's actually like a little hook on the other side. Hold on, carefully shut that. Um, and from there, what I did was, let me give you some light. So, um, I literally just put it on the, like the little clip that holds it. Um, like if you're going to put it in your pocket or whatever, I uh, put that around the wires and now I'm going to try and pull that through. Um, and from there, I will just kind of create a little custom, um, you know, slit through the shift boot and then bundle everything up, put in the O2 sensor and we should be good to go. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, keep you informed if there's any changes that happen. Um, but other than that, I'll continue obviously to take you step by step. All right, guys, just so you could see. So I created a little slit in the boot right here. I pulled it through um, and I have it wired up um, to the uh, to the gauge right now. So I'm gonna go underneath. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up down there. Um, find areas to somehow with zip ties, you know, make sure it's completely out of the way. It's not running against anything hot um, or getting caught in anything. Um, I'm probably not gonna take you guys with me because it's going to be just way too hard to record. But yeah, I'm going to bundle that up and then I'm, I'll show you when I plug in um, everything to the O2 sensor and, uh, and go from there. I keep saying and go from there. I think because I'm, I've never worked on the Z before, so it's all a mystery. <laughs> so <laughs> literally, we're just going to go from there and see what's next. So like I said, gonna bundle <clears throat> everything up under the car try to make it look pretty make sure it's safe <clears throat> also too you want to make sure that this is all like off to the right I kind of have it like slightly going in reverse or, or, or twisted I guess you know towards the passenger a little bit it's not 100% um, like perpendicular to the shifter um, and the reason for it is when you you want to make sure that you have room when you you know shift over to go into reverse or shift up into fifth gear um, that you're able to of course so we'll go from here all right guys so everything is all bundled up and good to go i did have a little bit of an issue trying to make sure i put everything underneath um i guess tucked up away enough one so it didn't hit anything hot that was gonna get hot and two or any moving parts and then three um, car super low you know I don't want it to catch on anything and you know rip it out so um, yeah I think we're all good but regardless so it is running well so run 14.7 uh, which is 14 cents I mean that's where it should be so um, I'm, I'm excited about everything I'm happy that uh, it's looking good and uh, and yeah, I'm still going to take it to the tuner just to have them take a look at everything uh, just for my own peace of mind. And uh, and yeah, good to go. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Definitely stay into the next one. Hopefully this helped a little bit. Um, much, much more to come. So stay tuned, guys.